2021年度前期第2回目の接談塾を始めてまいります。え本日もお忙しい中、たくさんの皆様にご参加いただきまして、本当にありがとうございます。私、えー、司会の池内恵子ですえ。今日も進行を進めてまいります。どうぞ皆様よろしくお願いいたします。えー、開始前に今日は様々な確認がございますので皆様よろしくお願いいたします、えー、ご参加の皆様の出欠確認のため WebX のご登録には皆様のフルネームをよろしくお願いいたしますなお本日の講演はクラウド遠隔同時通訳ツールを使った通訳の音声提供がございます音声の提供でございます皆様お手元にご準備の通訳の音声用の端末をご準備くださいませそれではただいまから音声の確認テストを行います通訳さんよろしくお願いいたしますはい、ありがとうございます。私聞こえておりますえ。皆様いかがでしょうか。通訳の方のお声は届きましたでしょうか。お手元の端末で通訳の音声をお聞きくださいませ。もしも講演中に通訳の音声が聞こえなくなってきた場合は、ページをリロード、更新をお願いいたします。本講演につきましては、録画、画面の撮影、キャプチャーすること、SNS などへのアップといった二次利用を固くお断りしております。そのような行為が発覚いたしました場合は、事務局より削除を要請、または講師の先生より請求されます賠償責任をご請求させていただきます。なお、皆様がご利用の端末のシステムトラブルにより、画像や音声に乱れが生じた場合も、再送信やご返金はできかねますのであらかじめご了承くださいませ。音声や画像は皆様のお手元でのご調整をよろしくお願いいたします。また配信中に異常と思われる接続を発見した場合は予告なく切断する場合もございます。講師の先生へのご質問につきましては講演中でも結構でございます。Q&A より日本語でご記入をお願いいたします。今回は皆様より事前にいただいております質問に対してオードリータン様にご回答をいただいた後お答えさせていただきます。時間の関係上、すべての質問にお答えすることが難しく、恐れ入りますが、質問を事務局側で選定させていただきますのでご了承くださいませ。さて、本日第2回目となります先端塾は、台湾デジタル担当政務委員のオードリー・タン様を講師にお迎えしております。本日はデジタルソーシャルイノベーションをテーマに、皆様から事前にいただいたご質問、WebX 上で Q&A でいただいたご質問に回答いただく形で進めてまいります。なお、ご質問の際は、プライベートに関すること、日本を含む他国の政策への評論に関する質問はご遠慮いただきますようお願いいたします。それではオードリーダン様、よろしくお願いいたします。まずはですね、えー、日本の皆様に、えー、そちらからご挨拶を一言いただけますでしょうか。Certainly. Um, are you hearing me okay? Is the speed of speaking okay for your interpretation?、Um, hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here virtually to share about the ideas of digital social innovation. As many of you may have heard, in Taiwan, we use the idea of fast, fair, and fun. To counter the pandemic so far with no lockdown and counter the infodemic with no takedown. This requires solving a paradox of increasing the speed of response while reducing the risk. And I call it a swift and safe approach. 
It's like the German autobahn system of highway with no speed limit. I was in Germany when I was 11 years old, and I heard that in their highway, the faster you drive, actually the safer you are. And this is how we approach digital social innovation. I look forward to explore these ideas with you. それでは皆様からいただいたご質問を順番にご紹介してまいりますまず一つ目のご質問でございます今私は仕事が楽しかったり楽しくなかったりいろいろとあって日々の感情がジェットコースターのようですオードリー・タンさんはお仕事楽しいですかお仕事を楽しむ秘訣はありますかそういう質問ですお願いします My answer is rooted in my personal habit of sleeping for eight full hours every day and also dividing my working day into 30 minute segments called the Pomodoro method. This method allows me to reflect on each and every half an hour chunks. So if I'm having unenjoyable moments, it only lasts for at most 30 minutes. And then I can go back and reflect on what just happened. And I do not, for example, respond to SNS or respond to instant message during my focus in the 30 minutes. So that means I would not be distracted by the good news or bad news that's currently happening in the news. So I only allow myself to be distracted five minutes every 30 minutes. And so I believe this is one of the tricks, if not a secret, of managing our own emotional response and keep on an engaging and fun workplace. ポモドールだったんですね。踊り出す様の仕事の楽しむ秘訣がね。はい、ありがとうございます。続いての質問です。お一人の方から五つ質問をいただきましたので、一つずつお尋ねしてまいります。まず一つ目です。日本においてダイバーシティが浸透していくために必要なことはどのようなことだと思われますか I believe、uh, the idea of diversity is just the beginning. The end result should be inclusion. Diversity means we have a lot of people with different experience at a table, but inclusion means we see each other based on our common experiences instead of on our differences alone. For example, I say that I have experienced a puberty、uh, when I was 13, another puberty when I was 25, but I don't say I identify as this or identify as something else, which means shared experience and shared values is more important than just diversity alone. Diversity is important, but it's just one step toward inclusion. And I believe Japan, like any other society, put a very strong importance on this shared experience and shared values. ありがとうございます。続いて2つ目の質問です。台湾において IT が有効に活用されている理由は何だとお考えでしょうか Because we see IT, which connects machines to machines, as just the building block to digital, which connects people to people. By focusing on only the IT technologies that facilitates people to people connection, we avoid the authoritarian use of IT, which strives to replace people. We don't replace people. We make sure that people connect better with people by putting IT in its place. Instead of replacing, we assist. And augment people to people innovations and that empowered people who are closest to the pain, closest to the suffering, where they can also co create. This required two things first, broadband as a human right, second, digital competence, not just literacy in our basic education. So once we have universal broadband access and universal digital competence education, everyone can participate in the design process toward a digital society.
い、ありがとうございます。えー、続いて三つ目の質問になりますね。オードリータンさんが世の中で活躍できるようになったのはどんな環境、そしてどんな人物がいらしたからだと思われていますか ？The environment is the internet. The inter in the internet refers to its very strong principle of end-to-end -end innovation, meaning If I think of a good idea and you agree with the good idea, it only takes two of us for a new idea to start to network on internet. We do not need to seek permission from our superiors or from our local operators. The internet is permissive in its acceptance of new innovations. And because of this, whenever I see anything I want to change, I just make a new version of it. It's called forking, making a new version of it. But with the I hope that the original, like a government website or service, can merge it back. I contribute not just to Taiwan's digital environment, but also, for example, when the to Tokyo Metropolitan Government published its、um, anti-COVID、uh, dashboard, I also just contributed on the translation as a citizen in the internet, not as a digital minister of Taiwan, and accepted by its merit, not because of my role. And so this end-to-end And innovation, I believe, enable the people to co-create on shared projects, not based on the superiority or inferiority of ranks. はい、ありがとうございます。続いての質問ですけれども、日本の高齢者、つまりデジタルネイティブではない世代に期待することを教えてくださいますか？ I believe digital should adapt to the society. We're not asking the society to adapt to the digital. So in Taiwan, when we make new digital services, we always engage, like with my own grandmother, who is 88 years old now, when co-creating the mask rationing system or the SMS-based contact tracing system. We make sure that the 80 years old, the 70 years old, are part of the design process, are part of the focus group. And if you ask them, they can contribute with a lot of Of wisdom, but if you do not ask them and just order them to obey, of course they're going to feel left it out and excluded. So I expect exactly as we would on other citizen to contribute into decision making and design process on your spare time. And the seventy year old people and eighty year old people, many of them have a lot of spare time. So more contributions. はい、ね、おばあちゃまが八十八歳でいらっしゃるということですね、えー。続いてのご質問なんですけれども、SDGs についてどのように認識されていますか ？I believe the SDGs are a shared vocabulary. Where we can express the work that we do, the work that we're working toward in shared index. So I can say, for example, my work on open government is SDG 16, and my work on the digital innovation and partnership is SDG 17. So based on those simple numbers, we can align and find like-minded people better. This ties to the idea of end-to-end -end innovation on the internet. Just by using the SDGs numbers as like a hashtag, we can find co-creating groups much more easily than we would previously just in our own sector. So people working on corporate social responsibility, on university social responsibility, on public procurement. On co-ops and social entrepreneurship, previously they didn't have the same vocabulary, so it's hard to find partners. But with SDG, everybody can work together. はい、えー、続いての方の質問に移ってまいりますね。えー、続いての質問はですね、先ほどお答えいただいたちょっと高齢者のことに関することで、えー、ちょっとあの同じ類の質問にはなるんですけれども、えー、マネジメント層にいらっしゃる方のほとんどが IT に不慣れなことが原因で。IT とともに育ってきた世代との間に溝ができていることも多々あるのですが
例えば IT に慣れ親しんだ若い世代の方々がこれまでにない発想やアイデアを提言してもマネジメント層がその内容について理解ができないがゆえに拒絶してしまってアイデアの発信者が発言する気力を失うというパターンがあり企業の中で IT 分野でのイノベーションの目が摘み取られてしまうという問題がありますと。で一方で、えー、そのような在り方に疑問を持って、えー、早期退職や転職を急いでしまう若い世代が多くいるという現実がありまして IT スキルを持った人材を多くの、えー、IT スキルを持った人材を同じ企業内で長期間確保することが難しいという問題があります。技術の進歩による世代間ギャップというものが世界共通の課題であるはずなんですがダンさんがいつも発信していらっしゃる台湾でのこの正銀競争若者と高齢者がお互いに学び合うという心あの精神が浸透していると思うんですけれどもアメリカでも、えー、意見の交換の際に世代間の差がほとんど生まれていないということをよく聞きますと、えー、日,本の日本人が世代を超えてつながることができるヒントというものがありましたら教えていただきたいですとちょっと質問を要約してお話しさせていただきましたいかがでしょうか。I believe in Taiwan as well as Japan, we do, of course, respect seniority, but we respect even more the social positions and ranks. And so,、uh, our suggestion of hacking the system, in a sense, is just to place really young people on really high positions. So, for example, in our cabinet, there are young reverse mentors who are officially advisors to the cabinet. But they're all under 35 years old. There's 25 people of that age. And we also have, for example, the Open Government National Action Plan Steering Committee. And the committee member is as young as 19 years old. And when she,、uh, Councillor Wang,、uh, first raised a petition that affected everyone in Taiwan about banning plastic straws, she just turned 17 at that time. So, when we put someone who's 17 or 19 years old as a cabinet level advisor, it's not uh, that uh, she suddenly b e c o m e a 70 year old, but she holds a cabinet advisor position. And people respect that position much more than they would actually for seniority. So, in our culture, in a culture like ours in East Asia, I believe intentionally appointing young people, not exclusively young people, just some young people,、uh, into a mixed generation board on the highest level, that contributes a lot to the intergenerational solidarity. はい、えー、それでは続いての方からのご質問です、えー、この方はですね行財政改革のお仕事をしていらっしゃるそうです、えー、多くの人と課題を共有して進めていくことに難しさを感じているとのことなんですね、えー、改革に対して全体としては賛成多数でも個別の具体的な話に入ると些細なことに対して反対の声が強く上がり結局何も変えられないという体験があるそうですどのように進めていけば多くの人と危機感を共有して共感しながら改革を進めていけるでしょうか経営層から広げていく方法と現場の職員から広げていく方法とではどちらがより良い結果につながるとお考えでしょうか Both.、Uh, it's very easy to think of reforms that save the time for the on-site staff but increase risk of the management level. On the other hand, it's also very easy to imagine some way to simplify the work of management, but actually at a cost of safety of the on site staff because they have to work double duties by maintaining the old and new systems、uh, in parallel.、Uh, so, if you make trade offs of swiftness and safety in the management and the frontline staffs on those four different points, 
if you improve on one to the detriment of the three or improve on three to the detriment of one, you will face opposition, very strong opposition. So what our uh, theory of change has always been is I'm a public servant of the entire public service and I only roll out new ideas that save the time for everyone and reduce the risk for everyone. So it's swift and safe across the board. Now by necessity, that means that all my uh, contributions are incremental. There's no broad swiping changes. There's just one change here, one change there, but it saves time for everyone and does not expose anyone to more risk. And before long, you will get the trust and support for people across all the different ranks because they understand that you are not sacrificing their quality of life to further your reform. ありがとうございます。え、政府のIT技術活用は行政の効率化をもたらしますが、監視社会や独裁の火種にもなると思います。それを防ぐには何が必要だと考えていらっしゃいますか？The most important part is to imagine better alternatives. Too often, especially during the pandemic, many proposals are like, oh, we have to let states surveil us more, otherwise the big company or take over. Or we have to let big companies take more power, otherwise the state will take over. So when it's phrased like this, like a false dilemma, of course people despair because it seems like just a choice between two bad ideas. But actually there are often good ideas that are beyond the state or the capitalists taking the surveillance. For example, we have in our Taiwan the idea of a social sector. Our leading public forum, the PTT, is maintained by the National Taiwan University, a student's pet project enjoying academic freedom, free of shareholders or stakeholders, and not at all associated with government. So because of its academic independence and its embracing of the open source model of collaborative governance, everyone who are part of the PDT community can contribute to the governing and the source code is of course open. And it is a living example of a social sector that's not captured by the capitalist or the state interest. And so just pointing to these small but important examples like Wikipedia, OpenStreetMap, and so on, invites people to imagine a different way, a way that's based on social sector first approach without getting captured by the state or the private sector. ついてはですね、続いての方5つ質問をくださってます。まず最初は日本についての質問が2つあります。1つずつ参りますね。日本では学習指導要領で子供が学ぶ内容が統一され、特に厳しく管理され、大学入試も共通のテストが使われる中で
of uh, network sociology is not even fully formed. So I have to uh, bring my own constellation together by the not very well identified stars in different disciplines, try to piece together the answer. So I wouldn't call it a originality because people around that time are very interested in that research question, it's not just me, but I would call it a transdiscipline attitude, a discipline uh, that is not uh, defined by textbooks, but defined by our own research questions. So the more capstone projects, the more research of collaborative teams, that the school system can get into the mind of the teachers who will then help the children formulate their own research questions, the better it will be to respond to emerging trends and emerging situations in the world. And the more inductrine it is in fixed disciplines, the less flexible it will be to make uh, sense of the new emerging issues that's happened in the world. That's my own experience, but I cannot answer a question about university degree because I've never had one. ありがとうございます。続いてですね、金融のDXかについて既存システムの安全性が高く現金の使用に不便を感じないと考える日本人が多数を占める中で、金融特に銀行のDXかをどのように進めればよいのでしょうか。銀行員たちはDXかを進め
今後、世界の各国では若者が世界の社会の変革をリードしていくことが想像されます、それではミドル層やシニア層はどのように社会に貢献して、みずからの生きがいを見つけていけばよいのでしょうか、一部の国家ではミドル層は疲弊して、リスクも取ることができないことから、高いリターンを得られず、閉塞感を感じているように思えると。またミドル層やシニア層が多様性を受け,入れる受け入れることができるのだろうか目をそらしているようにも思えますと、えー、オードリーさんはどのように思われますかという質問です。So,、uh, by, by、uh, working on intergenerational solidarity, it means that I both have the sympathy to the young people because I'm well versed in digital realm, but I'm myself a digital migrant. I was not born with the internet. I was born actually into the martial law in Taiwan, into a dictatorship. It's just during my childhood, Taiwan b e c o m e democratized. And when I was 12 years old, I discovered the internet. So I still remember the pre internet and even pre democracy days in Taiwan, which means that I have also the sympathies for the more senior people who fought for democracy, who struggled for democracy. So we, the middle aged people, are literally at the midpoint. That can, through our shared experience, connect to both the young people and the more senior people. And this is a form of diversity. Diversity also applies to intergenerational solidarity. Diversity is not just about、uh, gender and sexual orientation and things like that.、Uh, diversity is about the different experience, but with a lot of overlap. So I believe that the middle aged people are the perfect bridges or translators that can bring together the different generational experience. And we then realize, regardless of the young or old generation, the people in Taiwan value democracy. We value international collaboration, and that's what brings all the generations together. I think the global nature of the economy makes these issues much more seen around the world, identified around the world. And by making this a social issue, we're now seeing in a lot of developed countries the talk from the incentives or trickle down is now switching to the talk on equities. Uh, and on upholding the equities of opportunity, of access, and whatever I just talked about broadband as human rights,、uh, digital competence, healthcare as a human right, and so on, all are sprung from this global refocus on equity. So I do believe that highlighting the problem is. The first step toward addressing such problems. And under the frameworks of SDGs and so on, the idea of no one left behind strongly put our focus into inviting the solutions that doesn't say, oh,、uh, let's fix the problem for the wealthy people and then maybe the other people will trickle down later. No, we need to focus on issues that will. Provide a benefit for all and especially empowering people closest to the pain. So, I believe this international change of focus is really happening before our own eyes, and the pandemic only accelerated it. So, I think that's what I said. I think that's what I said. I think that's what I said. 中国が進める管理型経済の将来についてえどのように考えていらっしゃるかということですね何でもやってもいいよ何でもやってもよいという極端な自由と国家の一方的な管理のどちらにも問題があるとは思うんですけれども中国の国民が自由を求める日は来るのでしょうかというご質問です。
Oh, so the question is not when will the U.S. people seek management? Huh? Anyway, so uh, the the question I think when paraphrased this way reflects on the dilemma I pointed out several questions ago, which is about uh, should we let state control everything or should we let capitalists control everything? Of course, both are not desirable. Even the people who are most pro so-called uh, liberal economy no longer think that we should just run with surveillance capitalism. Most people realize it's not a good idea to have a surveillance capitalism or a surveillance statism. So it's just that the alternative, the social sector innovation or social innovation are not that well known globally. So in Taiwan, what we are working on is a social sector led what I call people public private partnership that uh, goes without admitting this false dilemma is necessary. And it's not denial because we actually found something that strengthened democracy during the counter of the pandemic, that strengthened free speech while countering disinformation. So what we call the Taiwan model is not specific to Taiwan, but I think Taiwan is one of the main uh, grounds of innovation for this kind of social innovation. And I do believe the people in Japan share many of the same ethical and cultural backgrounds that we enable this kind of innovation without being captured by either a surveillance state or surveillance capitalism.続いてのご質問に参りますね。マーケティングのスペシャリストの方々とイノベーションについて議論した際に、企業において しかし、オドリタンさんの著書、デジタルと インクルージョンの精神を大切にして自ら行動に移されているということを知り、イノベーションがもっと自由で身近なものとして誰もがイノベーターになれる可能性があると国民の皆さんが理解されていると、そんな風に感じると。日本では企業をはじめ学校、政
on the very next day, on the next 2 p.m. Those good ideas sometimes get incorporated very quickly and live streamed to the entire society. And people have real time conversations on the chat room next to the live stream anyway. So it's almost like uh, Nico Nico, right? It's almost like a real time commentary community that's part of our daily democracy uh, practice when countering the pandemic. There's many more examples, but the counter pandemic one is one that people are most familiar with. So I believe this is not expensive technology. Live streaming literally costs nothing, like marginally, no cost. If you set up this um, infrastructure, you can keep doing it uh, every day. It's just that when people in the decision making places, if they get into the habit of listening to the signal, from the entire internet community they will be able to listen even more because they understand they can correct their courses with much agility but if they think oh people on the internet they're just noise then of course it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy <laughs> all they will see is noise and they will not engage that much with the internet community so it all depends on whether we invest enough into the civic infrastructure on the digital realm. We need to build the digital equivalent of town halls, of university campus, of museum and public parks. Because if you don't invest in this infrastructure, people will still talk about politics and public affairs, but on the digital equivalent of nightclubs like Facebook and so on, and you don't get a lot of very constructive ideas.今日はですね、このオンラインで炭さんのお話をね、私たちは聞く、お伺いする機会をいただいているわけですけれども、台湾の皆さんはオンラインを通じて、え、炭さんとこうお話ができるような、こうプラットフォームのようなものがありましたら
that connects social innovators with policy makers, the social sector with the economic sector, so that we can realize these innovations on a national scale. So when I hit roadblocks, I simply ask fellow innovators, okay, I'm stuck. If you're the digital minister, what would you do? <laughs> and then we work on those new ideas together. なるほどあのつなぐという言葉が今日は何度も出てきているように思います今のお話でもこうつなぐということをおっしゃいましたし先ほど世代のお話をされた時にもつなぐという言葉が出てきましたオードリー・ダンさんにとってこの何かと何かをつなぐということはとても重要だとお考えですか Yes,、uh, I believe that the freedom to connect is what internet gave us Previously,、uh, when we talk about liberal democracy, we think about negative freedom, like freedom from dictatorship, freedom from surveillance, freedom from censorship. But the freedom to connect and associate, I believe this is a positive freedom of this century. ありがとうございます。事前にいただいておりましたご質問は今すべて踊りダンサーにお答えいただいたんですけれども、えー、今ご覧いただいている皆様からのご質問をこれよりご紹介してまいりたいと思いますが、えー、質問はチャットに入っているんでしょうかどうでしょうかはいではちょっとチャットを見せてみましょう。ちょっと待ってくださいね。はい。はい。はい、えー、それではですね。あ、はい、えー。ではちょっとお尋ねしていきます。日本では、えー、子どものオンラインゲームの依存が問題となっています。台湾にも同じ問題はありますか。もしある場合は、子どものオンラインゲームの依存について。I believe that it is a symptom, but it is not by itself the root cause of a problem. When the children have good access to intergenerational, like familial and extended family support, then they are less likely to get addicted to pretty much anything. I mean,、uh, addiction is often a symptom. So, if it's not addicted to online games, like before we have even online games, the children who are neglected or have poor interpersonal support get s addicted on something else, but they always can get addicted on something. So, I believe we need to treat it as the symptom it is and find good supporting communities. And paradoxically, The online communities that make things together, the creative communities on the internet, are the cure to the addiction to the games that are not socially connecting. So I often say when we see the virtual reality, let's make it a shared reality, meaning that it's the same screen, it's the same internet, but you can choose to be socially isolated or you can choose to be socially. Contributing. So, creating such pro social spaces, the capstone projects, and so on that I refer to, this is the true solution to get the children's attention into a pro social way. Hi, Chinamini Odori Tan san, what online the game will Tanoshin Dari Nasaru the Shoka? Yes, of course.、Uh, I learned English、uh, playing a card game called Magic the Gathering.、Uh, it began as a paper based trading card game, but later on, it's also an online game, and I helped developing the programs to facilitate online playing. I even came to Tokyo to compete. In the Pro Tour, is the kind of a regional championship and won the、uh, top eight、uh, in the APEC championship in Tokyo. <laughs> so、uh, it's not Olympics because it's、uh, more like a mental sport. <laughs> But、uh, this is my、uh, brief stint、uh, in competitive e s p o r t e s p o r t e s p o r t e s p o r t e s p o r t e s p o r t e s p o r t e s p o r t e s p o r t e s p o r t e s p o r t e s p o r t e s p o r t e s p o r t e s p o r t e s p o r t e s p o r t e s p o
人間は自分の興味のあるニュースや情報は見るけれども興味のないニュースや情報は拒否しますネットで自分の興味のあるニュースを見るとその人の思想や好みを判断して以降同じようなニュースがよく表示されてきますが知らず知らずのうちに人の思想が右寄りの人はさらに右寄りに左寄りの人はさらに左寄りに左寄りになっていくのではないかと思いますとこれらがエスカレートしていくと人の思想をコントロールすることが可能になるのではないかさらには争いに発展していくのではないかと危惧しています。えー、そのあたりりはどのようににお感じになりますか Um, I do believe that it is a particular symptom of surveillance capitalism because often the places where they reinforce your preferences want to sell you things. Right? It may be advertisements, it may be some other、uh, product placements, but it is basically a compound、uh, effect of the capitalist、uh, idea. Of attracting customers and this misplaced idea that attention equals engagement. It's not attention, it's not engagement.、Uh, and so、uh, the main、um, response to these、uh, surveillance capitalism uh, syndromes, uh, if I may use that word, syndromes, is to realize that it is. A lot like addiction to say, and、uh, if I offend, please.、Uh, um, Forgive、uh, to to tobacco. So,、uh, if there are smokers here, I, I hope that you forgive me using this、uh, metaphor. Uh, but um, the, the smoking、uh, is not necessarily a bad thing, but smoking in an environment where people who are not smokers are affected by the smoking, that's universally recognized as a not healthy thing. Uh, but uh, currently, The use of the surveillance capitalist、uh, anti social corner of social media as damaging to the people who are not、uh, aware of its adverse effects, a, a kind of mental addiction health hazard, is not very well understood to the same degree, like how secondhand smoking、uh, is affecting the、uh, physical health of people who are not smokers. So, my point is not that we should ban anything.、Uh, for the record, I'm not saying we should ban. Anything. I'm saying that we need to realize, similar to how other addiction sciences work, how addiction mental science w o r k in such e n v i r o n m e n t and then take collective action the same as we would with any addictive substance like wine and things like that. So, if we take a healthy attitude, then of course, a little bit drinking of sake can enhance social、um, interaction. It has pro social effects. But we should not uh, let uh, very young people or people who have not uh, been uh, educated in the addiction sciences、uh, to have unlimited、uh, effect on the people near them. And this is as much a regulatory、uh, invitation as it for a social norm, like a consumer protection、uh, invitation. Often, as we have seen around the world, the top down prohibition like rules never really worked very well. But the social sector support groups and education groups to seek safer alternatives that often worked well. So, still, the community and the social sector need to take the charge here. But of course, the regulatory regime also needs to adjust as the scientific evidence g a t h e r ね、日本では新型コロナウイルスの広がりで緊急事態宣言が現在出されておりますが国民は行動制限に従おうとしなくなったように見受けられますと国民の政府に対する信頼が低下していると思います。政府への信頼を回復させるにはやはりインターネットによる情報公開とオープンに意見を募集しそれを政策に反映させてい,くいけばよいのでしょうかというご質問です。In Taiwan,、uh, our main response to the counter pandemic is crowdsourced. As I mentioned, 
it's gathering the people's suggestions, calling to 1922, or having this conversation online, which are then incorporated into the daily Central Epidemic Command Center. So I strongly believe that there should be a way to gather the idea from the crowd, as this questioner said, but equally important or even more important is this tempo of responding every 24 hours into new emerging situations and new emerging ideas and not having this hang up on the old methods, but rather we're free to say, oh, yesterday we realized that something were wrong. Thank you for pointing it out. From tomorrow, uh, we're going to do something different. As long as people can rely on this tempo of every 2 p.m. explanation that incorporates people's uh, understanding, and as long as the journalists uh, can ask to their heart's content, every CECC press conference doesn't stop until the journalists run out of questions. So uh, this will then enable people to feel that, oh, it's actually the people's power. Uh, Taiwan's success in countering the pandemic so far is because the collective intelligence is smarter than the entire cabinet. So when you have this feeling, then people will then contribute more. オードリータンさんはイノベーターをつないでいるだけとお話ししていらっしゃいましたが、イノベーターを強化する、目利きするポイントはどういう点でご覧になっているでしょうか。Right. So uh, there are uh, some very good ideas posted by anonymous people or pseudonymous people. Uh, the most trending um, e-signature collecting petitions on the join platform are all pseudonymous. We, I don't even know who they are. So I don't assess innovators. It's on the merits of innovation that we respond. はい。え、続いての質問ですね。レイカールワイツが、え、シンギュラリティについて提唱するように、え、これから社会はこれまでにないほど急速に劇的に変化していくと様々なところで言われています。え、オドリタンさんは今後10年、20年、30年と経った時にデジ
to the ideals of a democratic society, not the other way around. There's nothing inevitable with this idea of technological singularity. It's there to remind us that machines are here to connect people, not to replace people, uh, not to replace people to people connection with people to machine connection or even machine to machine connection. Machines are here to enhance people to people connection uh, throughout the entire um, global civilization.同じ方がご質問なんですけれども、近年の Well, the question mentioned computers, but just a few decades ago, computer, this word referred to humans, uh, humans who, who compute, uh, who calculate. Uh, just a few decades ago, the word in English printer uh, refers to people who work on typesetting. So obviously the work of computer and printer are now done by machines, but it doesn't mean that the humans lose their job. We still have a lot of people working on publishing. We have a lot of people working on the analytics or on the data sciences. So they don't, of course, call themselves printer or computer anymore, but they are working on the valuable work that the publishers and the data analytics people in the previous generations do. It's just they now have like a co-pilot. They don't have to do the work that doesn't involve communication or personal judgment, that doesn't involve the same sort of people-to-people -people communication that I just referred to in my ideas around digital pluralism, in the things that are automated, that feels like a chore that they don't want to do. Well, now they have a co-pilot that they can work with, but it doesn't mean that their work is replaced. It just means that some part of their job are being automated, but since people invented machinery since people invented writing actually uh, that has always been happening but it doesn't mean that people are deprived of their work rather it means that it, the work itself is being democratized more people who want to contribute into publishing or data analysis can do so without investing a lot of upfront payment え、Well, it's just like counter pandemic. It boils down to good habits, good norms. Uh, and uh, in internet security, if the people have bad habits, like sharing their passwords to their coworkers, then no system can save them. So uh, a good habit, like you know, wearing masks, washing hands, keeping social distance, <laughs> and so on, things that are easy to remember, like keeping some backups uh, in three different places, uh, like uh, don't install new things, use a web browser uh, in a kind of um, what we call a, a private browsing uh, tab or things like that. Uh, these are simple norms or habits that people can uh, be asked to do. And if uh, they get rewarded, just like uh, people remind each other to wear a mask and reward each other by saying, hey, this is a beautiful rainbow mask, <laughs> and so on, then people will be incentivized to do this more, right? So uh, the ideas of information security is not just in the system that we invest and install, but rather in good norms and habits that people reinforce on each other through their daily interaction. So I believe that this norm building is the most important thing in information security in a large organization.
レインボーカラーのマスクを見せてくださいましたありがとうございます<笑>続いてのご質問です今この方は40歳で科学会社で働いていて IT とは全く関係のない部署にいらっしゃるそうですね会社は DX に積極的に取り組み中です理解を深めるために今からでもプログラミングや DX の勉強をした方がいいですかという40歳の方ですいかがですか What this is like studying English, right? If you study English as a foreign language, as a subject in itself, unless you're a linguist or interested in linguistic itself, you're going to find it very boring. But if you learn English not as a foreign language, but as a second language, meaning that you don't learn English for English's sake, but learn English for engaging with a community that speaks primarily English, then English is just an instrument, it's a tool. It's just like when I learned English、uh, when I was 14, 15 years old. It's just to memorize the card names from Magic the Gathering. So, my first vocabularies are all the trading cards、uh, from that particular vocabulary.、Uh, and that doesn't mean that English is uninteresting to me, but it means that playing card game is even more interesting. And I learned English along the way. So, learn programming along the way. Find some part in your job that can use some automation. It may be just a pivot table in Excel or something, but a little bit of、uh, change that can save you like five minutes a day. And before long, you have a lot more spare time, and then you can explore more programming. So don't learn programming languages like a foreign language. Engage into a community, save your own time or reduce your own risk, and engage in the community and learn whatever language that community near you speaks in programming. なるほど英語を勉強してくださいということで、そうなんですね。続いての質問とても楽しい質問ですこの方にとって私にとってオードリーさんはドラえもんのように見えますと優しい雰囲気でイノベーターをいろいろとポケットの中に持っているイメージですとどのようにすればイノベーターをうまく,うまく利用できるドラえもんみたいになれるでしょうかというご質問です。I should probably wear a bell here. <laughs> so, anyway, now to be fully more like Doraemon, <laughs> I need to、uh, dress up in cosplay. But anyway,、uh, I, I do believe that Doraemon is a very good character to, to look up to、uh, when we think about the human machine、uh, relationship, because Doraemon never i m p o s e any top down doctrines. And every time that the community tries something, more often than not, they find the limitations、uh, in its、uh, effect on the society. So it is not、uh, a ideal AI character that, like Duke's Ex Machina, solves everything, but neither is Doraemon a Terminator <laughs> that destroys everything. So、um, the very、um, kind of gentle atmosphere in the Doraemon comics. Tells us the、uh, machines and IT are not there to dominate people or to destroy people. Rather, they are there to assist, sometimes make mistakes, but always correct based on the real、uh, feedback from the young people in the comics. So, listen quickly to the feedback. And adjust quickly also to better suggestions. And I believe that is what enabled the social innovation to be truly everyone's business with everyone's help. Thank you very much. In the SNS, the SNS and 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 the SNS. インターネットで声を拾うことができるということですが一部の大きな声であり実は多くの人の声ではないということも起こり得るのではないでしょうかインターネットでの声についてどう取り扱うのが適当だと思われますかインターネットでのご意見という意味だと思いますはいいかがでしょう Well, as I mentioned, we need to intentionally build space on the internet 
that facilitate democratic listening. If we do not build the digital equivalent of an academic campus or a town hall or a public park, then we will be taking to the more antisocial corner of the SNS that are specialized in advertisement and entertainment uh, and not at all uh, suited for democratic conversation. And don't get me wrong, I'm again not saying anything against the nightlife district. I'm not saying we should ban them. I'm not saying that. There is a, a, co a contribution to the society for the existence of nightclubs and such. It's just if your local mayor want to hold a town hall meeting in the nightclub with very loud music, uh, smokes, uh, people have to shout to get heard, uh, private bouncers, addictive drinks, then you will not get anything resembling a democratic conversation. And even with the same people, like if you bring all your city councillors into this nightclub, they will not make sense of the regulations and the budget and whatever, because simply the space is not designed for that. So what I have been saying is that we should not say that these people are good as innovators. These people are not. We should say this space is conductive to social innovation and democratic deliberation, and this space is not. Internet is a very wide place, and on Internet, everyone can choose how to shape the interaction. As simple as taking away the reply button and replace it with a upvote. As simple as taking away this idea of constantly pinging people with notifications and replace that with this daily or weekly summary of introducing quadratic voting and more uh, nuanced voting methods. All these are the concrete improvement like interior design that we can do to facilitate more pro-social spaces. So don't hate the social media, be your own social media. I believe 5G brought our conversations uh, between this room to room conversation, like we're both in a room now. Uh, but theoretically, with 5G, we can be anywhere, right? We could be at a mountain top, we could be at the, the surfing uh, areas, and so on, and still enjoy high quality video conferencing. But this is still two dimensional. We are not feeling that we are in the same space. We can't very easily share what we feel across our ambience to each other, simply because there is no sufficient bandwidth in 5G to do just that. So beyond 5G, I believe that we will work more aggressively toward what I call shared reality or co-presence, where we can bring in not just our room or our face, but rather our entire ambience and feel that we are in the same space. And that will require more beyond 5G investments in communication technologies. ありがとうございます。え、そろそろね、時間が近づいてきたんですけれども、え、最後の質問になりますが、この質問でよろしいですか。この質問でよろしいですか。はい、え、私は経営者ですと。VUCAの時代と言われていますが、今後中小企業の
of innovating in the open and innovating with your customer and with your suppliers. This way, uh, like in a crowdsourcing or crowdfunding campaign, if your idea is bought, at least you will know that it's a bad idea very early on. <laughs> your customer and your supplier will tell you. And if you embrace open innovation, it also means that you can try a few different ideas at once. And only the one that attracts the suppliers and customers uh, will be your next quarter's strategy. And over time, they're not only your supplier and customer anymore, but more like your partners, your colleagues, your collaborators. So I believe more engagement, open innovation lead the way of the small and medium enterprises. Thank you for the great questions and I wish you live long and prosper. はい、このWebXを通じて、もう本当にオンラインで素晴らしいな、こうしてオドリタンさんとつながることができて、とてもね、皆さんもとても喜んでいらっしゃると思います。本当にありがとうございます。ありがとうございました。Thank you. And thank you the interpreters uh, for the excellent work. I really enjoyed this work together. Thank you. ありがとうございます。ご出演いただきましてありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。え、本日は皆様ご参加いただきましてありがとうございます。えっとですね、どうやら音声にトラブルがあったということなんですけれども、待ちくださいね。え、あ、こちら